The Art of Soldering, Part 3, Soft Soldering. And now it's time to put it all together. And I'm using some Friar Lux solder paint. This is really good stuff, a little bit expensive, but incredibly useful. This is proper solder and flux in one mixture. And I put plenty of it on. And you notice that I put it about a quarter of an inch up the tube. Because once I position the tube vertically like this, when the correct temperature is reached, the solder will melt and run down towards the end plate. And this will give a really good joint. So that's one end done, now for the other end. You will notice the use of a paintbrush. I dip this in some water and wipe round the end with it. And what this does is just cleans up the end and evens out the solder. This is a bristle paintbrush, don't use a plastic one for obvious reasons. Unless of course you want the melted plastic paintbrush effect. As the main part of this condenser was soft soldered together, it doesn't need to go in the acid bath. I only reserve the acid bath for special occasions. I initially cleaned up this part using my polishing spindle, and now I'm using some metal polish to clean it up. As I mentioned earlier, these castings were not the best I've ever seen, and there were quite a few little lumpy bits on them. So here, using a cutting disc, I'm removing them. And I'm removing them very carefully, so as not to do any damage to the main part of the casting. I don't know how these unsightly lumps get to be on the castings in the first place, but I don't know anything about foundry work, so I'm not really qualified to comment. Now it's time to separate the two half brasses and get ready to solder the pieces of phosphor bronze into position. Some people may be thinking, well, why don't I just make a couple more big end brasses? The reason for doing it this way is in a previous video or two, I've shown how to make big end brasses. So I'm not going to show it again. This is an alternative method and it's fairly quick. And if you think about it, it's a good idea. Because once these brasses get worn beyond economical repair, I can just repeat this process and make new shells for them. Very similar, I suppose, to big end shells in a car engine, but obviously much, much smaller. And it's more fun making them this way. I have to keep myself occupied some of the time in the asylum. As you've just watched, I've coated the brasses using some Friar Lux paint. What I didn't show was I've also added some ordinary flux. So this will be a really good soldered joint. And don't forget, this is soft soldering, not silver soldering, so the parts do not need to be quite as hot. Just hot enough to melt the solder, in fact. And here is one of the features of my video tutorials, metal parts cooling. To speed up the process, I didn't show all of it. I actually added some extra electrical solder to the mix as well. Both of these pieces of phosphor bronze are very well soldered into the gunmetal brasses. I'll clean them up later. Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. Part 7, assembling and finishing the condenser and water tank assembly, starting with a thorough clean of all the metal parts. Since the last episode, I've added this. It's a bush to allow me to fit a drain tap to drain the condensate at the end of a run. Now that the brass and copper parts are very clean, I can solder them together. Whenever you solder parts together, whether it be silver soldering or soft soldering, Absolute cleanliness of the parts is vital, and it's also quite important to use this stuff. This is flux soldering paste. It's the kind of stuff you buy from a DIY store, and once this is applied to the work and heated up, it cleans the metal. I'm applying plenty of this because I do not want any areas where there isn't any flux. I'm going to use plumber's solder to solder these components onto this metal plate. And unlike electrical solder, plumber's solder does not contain any flux built in. I can't really show much of the soldering process because it all takes place down inside the tubes and I really don't want to melt my new camera. The good thing is, because these are going to be painted, it doesn't matter if I get some solder on the brass base. If I was going to polish up this base, like on some condensers that I make, then I'd have to be very careful. But in this case, it really is not important because I'll be sanding off most of the solder that's on the base as I keep it for the paint. You will notice that in this clip I'm using the paintbrush a lot because I need to remove the excess solder from around the base of the tubes. I just dip the brush in some water and brush away the excess solder. The component that I soldered earlier has cooled and so it's on the bench and it's time to give it a really good scouring. First of all with emery cloth I need to scratch the brass as much as possible. But then once I've scratched the brass as much as possible I need to smooth out some of the scratches and make finer scratches using Scotch-Brite. 
And just in case you've never seen any of my other videos, Scotch Bright is an abrasive pad, a bit like a scouring pad, but a bit more vicious. I'll put the spelling on screen so you can get some for yourself. I use this stuff very frequently in my workshop for cleaning up metal parts as you see here and also getting a good finish on machine parts. But don't just take my word for it, try it for yourself. I've temporarily fitted a valve into the bush at the back of the condenser tank. It's a little bit on the large side, but it needs to be in order to drain the condensate in a reasonable time. And it's almost painting time. But first, I'm going to mask off the brass cap. But I need to make sure that none of the masking tape is on the copper part. So I'm using the edge of a ruler to just make sure this is the case. And that's almost it for this episode. All the parts are ready for painting. Not the top caps, they're just sat on the bench for effect. I found a lump of scrap brass in my scrap bin which supports the chimney and I'm spraying the parts using some etch primer. The etch primer I'm using is Precision Paints etch primer. I really do like this stuff and best of all, it works. Provided you follow the instructions, you must be able to see the metal through the paint and if you look carefully, you can see the metal through the paint. This means that the etch primer gets plenty of oxygen to do its job. Or at least I assume that's what the reason is. That's it for this episode. I'll just leave you with this shot of the paint drying. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.